Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Belgrade Online, an online ministry of Belgrade Avenue United Methodist Church. Welcome to Belgrade Online. I'm Dan, the video editor of Belgrade Online. It's a new year, and once again, Belgrade Online will be making some changes. Our world is ever-changing, and we want to keep things fresh here at Belgrade Online. So be watching for some changes in the coming weeks. And now, without further ado, here are this week's announcements, followed by Dan's sermon and some music to brighten your day. Thanks again for watching Belgrade Online. This Wednesday night at 6 p.m., Kent Calm is a Bible study called In the Footsteps of Jesus. And it's a great Bible study and discussion group. And there's going to be some video teaching portions each week by Max Lucado. And the teachings were filmed um, in the Holy Land. And each week we're going to be talking about um, one specific uh, text from Scripture. And the videos each week will, uh, the teachings that Max Lucado does, were shot where the teachings took place. Um, in the Holy Land. So we'll get to see a teaching on them by Max Lucado um, via video uh, in the place that they were thought to be originally taught. So it's going to be kind of a, a super cool thing. And um, I want to invite you all to that this coming Wednesday night, starting at 6 p.m. And there'll be a dinner so you can come hungry. And then uh, the discussion group will start around 6.30 and um, last uh, should, should be under an hour. So um, invite you to that. It's going to be wonderful. And um, that will be in uh, conjunction with the Sunday sermon series that kind of go together um, called The Other Side of the Shadows. So um, I invite you to that this, this Wednesday night and every Wednesday night through the duration of Lent leading up to Easter. So, um, hope to see you there, and um, hope you have a fantastic week. Hope to see you this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday, 10 a.m., and we also hope to see you this Thursday night um, for our Monday Thursday dinner together, um, and then we also are having a Good Friday service at 6 p.m. this coming Friday night in our sanctuary, a little meditative service, and um, we'll have everybody in and out in about you know 45 minutes and, and uh, just have a meaningful um, Good Friday for you. And, um, and then, of course, invite everybody to our uh, first movie night of the spring into this, hopefully into the summer. Hopefully this, this weather warms up uh, the Friday after Easter. So a lot of things coming up here. Hope to have hope to see you soon. And I hope you have a great day. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Pastor Dan here. Hope everyone's having a great, wonderful, fantastic, spectacular weekend so far. Hey, we've been in a series called The Other Side of the Shadows. And I'm talking about journeying through life's internal roadblocks. And we've been talking about the idea that, you know, a lot of times when we face internal struggles, our tendency is to avoid or deny or try to skirt around the process of getting through them. When in reality, the only way out is through them. And we get deterred from going through uh, those dark times and facing our shadows because we, we think there's some monsters hiding in there. But in reality, the more we face our internal struggles, the more we find out that the shadows can actually be our friends. So we have to face what's going on inside. And we talked about things like doubt and despair and worry and facing storms and hard times and anxiety and different things like that. But today we're closing up the series and we're going to tie it all together. And we are going to talk about two qualities to help get you to the other side. And those qualities are grace and grit. And I hope that you find this helpful. Uh, keep on watching to learn more about grace and grit to get you to the other side. And um, I hope it's helpful. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your week. And we will see you soon. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. Grace and peace. Father, we thank you for, for this time and we can look into your scriptures. And God, I ask that as we look into them, that you would speak to us this morning. 
Pray that my words would not be my own, but that they'd be from you, and that we'd all have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts that understand what you are saying to us today. In your name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, this by reading a scripture passage, a short one, two verses, from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verses 9 through 10. And this is the Apostle Paul talking. He's talking about uh, uh, how Christ had been preached, and how he, uh, Christ was preached, and, and how Jesus commissioned the apostles to go out and preach. And then he's talking about how he somehow fit into that picture as well. And so he says this, he says, I'm the least of the apostles and I don't even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He was a a Jewish terrorist before becoming a Christian uh, who literally sought and killed Christians. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect because I worked harder than all the other disciples, yet not I but the grace of God that was with me. Now we'll, we'll uh, go into that a little bit here in a second, but we've been talking about how, how to get through these difficult seasons in our lives when we feel like a mess internally. Um, now, when we get into these situations where we're facing some sort of a, a crisis um, internally, an existential crisis or some emotional crisis or something, something that's coming from the inside of us, Many times in those moments, we feel inadequate. We feel like we simply just aren't, you know, good enough or smart enough or talented enough or experienced enough or strong enough or fill in the blank with whatever you want enough. Just we feel like we aren't enough in general. We don't feel like we have what it takes to to be able to get through or handle what we're facing sometimes. Um. Whether it's, whether it's trauma or grief or something huge that we're facing on the inside or just, just angst with whatever it is, sometimes it just gets so, so huge in us that we, we don't know that we have whatever it takes to get through that at all. Um, and today as we tie up the series, I want to keep it short and I want to let you know that whether you are or aren't enough is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Um, Because getting through difficult internal turmoil, it's not about being anything. But there are two qualities that we can all embody. And if we embody these two qualities, we can get through and we can grow through anything. Anything life throws at us. And yes, anything. Anything at all. So, first one, the first quality that we're looking at. I'm just kind of getting right into it today. Um, There's been multiple, multiple studies that have been done over the past few decades of what creates success. You know, inevitably we're talking about success with with our own uh, growth and things. Um, But there's been multiple studies about what creates success in general uh, over the last few decades. Many organizations have studied this. You know, University of Harvard, West Point Military Academy, uh, many organizations for education research, uh, the National Spelling Bee Organization, whatever, the, the list goes on and on of what are the, you know, the, the biggest predeterminers of success. And the theory had always been, before these studies were done, that the most intelligent and the most talented uh, of people were the ones who were going to be the most successful, the most talented cadets at West Point, the most talented kids in school, the most intelligent uh, or, or skilled participants in the spelling bee or, or wherever, you know, the, the most qualified people on the, in the workforce. Um, you know, think about, think about anybody well-known that you know that, that is well-known, that is simply looked and respected, looked up to and respected in whatever they do. We think they're the most talented and the most intelligent people in their field or out there. But here's the deal. When the research actually came through, that is, that is not what the research shows. That's not what it showed. It didn't show that the most talented, the most skilled, the most qualified, the most smart or intelligent people, whatever, were the most successful. Not at all. When it came to West Point, they found that the smart people or the people who know a lot of stuff 
or really talented, sometimes they were the first ones to drop out. Because if you're really smart and you're really talented, you're used to things just naturally going your way. So when stuff gets hard, you give up. You're not used to stuff being hard. In students, the ones who were the most self-disciplined, although they did do well, there was another group that rivaled their success. And they weren't necessarily the most disciplined at all, quite the opposite. When it comes to kids who were in the National Spelling Bee contests, it usually was, is never the ones who naturally spelled well who usually won the spelling bee. In literally every single study, what researchers have found that the largest predictor of how well we as humans do in anything we do, how successful we are, it's all found in one word. And this one word is simply grit. It's grit. It's the ability to get knocked down, but get up again. It's the ability to get discouraged and get hurt, but for some reason you keep going. It's the internal resolve to keep moving when you want to quit. It's the sense to face our weaknesses and work on our weaknesses until we get those things down. What they found is the most greedy people were not the ones who looked at what they were good at and just hammered what they were good at. The greedy people who were successful were the ones who looked at their own weaknesses and worked on those suckers until they were their strengths. That's grit. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time, I think I've told you this before, one of my favorite, one of my favorite series of movies of all time is, is the Rocky movies. You know, and uh, I love the Rocky movies because Rocky becomes, Rocky Balboa, in the beginning of the series, he's a nobody. He's a terrible boxer. And by the end of the series, he's like heavyweight champion of the world multiple times, multiple years, you know. But the funny thing is, is in every single fight, he's not the best boxer. He's just the one that doesn't quit. <laughs> he's, he gets knocked down 10 times more than his opponents. His, he hardly ever knocks his opponents down. They knock him down. The only reason he wins is because He's the crazy dude that keeps getting up after his eyes are, his nose is broken, his eyes are bloody, and for some reason he can't see, but he keeps fighting and he wears down the strong dudes. He has grit. And I, that's what has always, I love that series because of that reason. And I, I feel like in my life, I've learned that quality because of, it sounds silly, but watching movies like that and things like that, I learned that quality of never giving up. There are some things in, 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 in life where you will never be the best at, not even close, but you will get more success over those who are the best simply because you don't quit. I remember on the, on the swim team in high school, there was one guy who could have been state champion multiple times over, but he never showed up to practice. The dude was, he was so naturally gifted in swimming, but the dude was lazy. He never showed up. He had this idea, like, I'm so good, they're not going to kick me out. So he just showed up whenever he wanted. And of course, the coaches didn't kick him out. But it was like, this guy could have been amazing. He had all the talent, no grit, no grit. Think about the, think about like the best Oscar winning actors or actresses that have made like the most epic movies go back and watch their first movie that they ever made. 10 out of 10 times that first movie that they ever made is terrible. Their acting was terrible. The movie was terrible. They were horrible. If you stopped, if you didn't know anything about them, didn't know, have never seen any of their Oscar winning movies and only saw that first movie that they ever made, you would be like, what a terrible actor. They're never going to amount to anything. What happens? How do they get to be Oscar winners? Grit. They refused to stay put. They kept working on their weaknesses and tried again and tried again and failed, tried, failed, tried, failed. But every time they failed, they failed a little bit less and they got a little bit better. It's simply the grit to outlast those others. It's grit, grit. You wanna to get to the other side of your shadows? You gotta be able to have the grit to face pain and face yourself. And many times we have to have the grit to face our own apathy. 
Because I don't know about you, but half the time, I don't want to face my stuff. I don't, it's not that I'm afraid of it. It's I don't have the energy half the time. But when it comes to our internal struggles, we can talk about, you know, these different shadows and everything and, and, and how, to, how we got to face them to get through the other side. But if we don't have the grit to actually do it, we'll never get through. And maybe we might push through, but we won't have grown when we get to that other side. And the goal is to get through what we're getting through with transformation. To mature, to grow, to be somehow stronger than when we started. To be less afraid, to be more brave, to be more strengthened, to be higher in our character. To be more skilled in whatever it is. The only way to get through the other side is with grit. It's grit. And this is good news because you don't have to be smart to have grit. You don't have to be skilled to have grit. You don't have to be the best at anything to have grit. You just gotta be, you just have to have the courage to keep working on your weaknesses. When you get discouraged and you feel like you're never gonna get past this one point, Grit keeps, keeps working on it. Even in the midst of discouragement, even when you want to quit, you want to throw down, grit keeps going. But it doesn't just keep going. It keeps going intentionally. You think about it. You go, okay, how come I keep failing? How come this is, this is making me afraid? How come I keep getting tripped up here? And you don't think about it emotionally. You set your emotions aside as best you can. And you honestly have a come to Jesus talk with yourself and say, okay, here's the reality of my situation. I'm probably not progressing because of this. Okay, so I'm going to tweak that. All right, tweak that. And you try again. And then you try again. And you try again. And you fail. And you try and you fail. And you try and fail. But each time you're failing forward. That's grit. That's grit. I, uh, when I was in music college, um, it took me... Uh, not too long to be able to become the top of my class. There were so many other guitar players in my, in my program that were so much better than me. But they, I don't know if they thought that just going to music school was just going to make them good, you know? Like standing in a garage, I, I'm, I'm going to become a great car by standing in a garage, you know? I'm going to be a good Christian just by coming to church. See what I did there? Um, doesn't work. <laughs> it's not what it's about. They thought that just by going to music college, it'd make them a good guitar player. And they were out partying every night. I don't know, trying to live the rock and roll lifestyle or something like that. But I would go to school. I would drive to school. I, I didn't live nearby. I lived an hour away. So I would drive an hour to school. As soon as school was over, I didn't hang out. I went right home, have a little snack, Maybe take a short little cat nap, but then I'd get to work and I'd practice another six to nine hours outside of the classroom every day. And that got me to be one of the top guitar players in my entire program. And that was grit. That was grit. And now there's so many situations, there's so many scenarios that, that you may have, that you might, so many hard times you might be facing. So many shadows that are intimidating you. Some people have the type of personality where you might be already sort of comfortable with the shadows in your life. And so moving through that isn't that big of a struggle for you. Maybe you're the kind of personality that whenever internal turmoil presents itself, it really freaks you out and it paralyzes you and you don't know what to do with it. Whatever situation causes that, whatever triggers that, in whatever, whatever one of those two scenarios you fall into, it will take grit to get past whatever roadblock you're trying to get past. It's grit. It's the fight in you. That's quality number one. If we want to get to the other side, we've got to have grit. Now, what if you don't have any fight left in you? What if you have nothing left? What if, what if the grit has run out and you're, you're, the place you're in is you just need to, you just, you just want to quit. It's it. You don't, you don't have anything left to go. 
That's when this second quality comes into place. Because sometimes we fought and we've got nothing left. Because grit is active. It's fighter. But the second quality is more passive. It's still sort of active, but it's active in a, in a different way. It's passive. It's all about receiving. When you've done all you know to do, when you've fought all you can fight, and you feel like you're growing weary, there's only, there's only one thing left to do. And it's found in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, it says this. It says, Apostle Paul says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into, everybody say it with me, this grace in which we now stand. And we can boast in the hope of the glory of God. Sometimes when you have nothing left, the only thing there is to do is just to throw yourself in God's grace. So you've got grit. But sometimes when you feel like you've got nothing left, you have to rely on God's grace. Grit is active. Grace is sort of active, but it's passive. The definition of grace, it's the gift of God to do what you can't do. The gift of God to do for you what you cannot do yourself. The, the, the word for grace uh, in the scriptures is the Greek word charis. And it means a gift. It's literally, the actual translation is simply a gift. Grace is a gift. This isn't, this isn't, something, um, this isn't something that we earn. This isn't something that we can somehow muster up. Grace only comes to us when we go and we let go. Grit is about fighting. Grace is about letting go. Sometimes, if you're a fighter type, if you're the type that's not afraid to face your shadows, sometimes, if you, maybe you got grit down, you might have more difficulty letting go. You might have difficulty thinking that letting go is, is responsible. <laughs> but sometimes letting go and throwing yourself on God's grace is not something to be ashamed of, but it's something that God desires we do and do it confidently. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, the writer says this, says, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. Some translations say with boldness approach God's grace so that we might receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. God's desire isn't that grace is something we do after we've done everything else. Grace is something that happens the whole time. But sometimes we get to a spot when we need to rely completely on grace instead of allowing grace to fuel our grit. And this, this is like a balance. It's like a wave. And in our scripture that we read when I first started this, this uh, sermon out here a few moments ago, we looked at how the Apostle Paul says that he was the least of all the apostles, yet he outworked them all. Yet at the same time, it was God's grace that was doing it. So the Apostle Paul understood this balance between grit and grace, of grace and grit. How sometimes you've got all the energy in the world to cooperate and tap into that grace, and you, that grace gives you grit and you're going for it, but sometimes you're tapped out. You don't have the energy to tap in. And it's in those moments when that grace is still carrying you, but you got to let go and let it carry you. Let God carry you. And in those moments, you realize that your grit was never just you to begin with. You were being empowered. And we learn these rhythms of rest, the rhythms of God's grace, rhythms of grace and grit and grace and grit. But it's grace is the wave the whole time, but sometimes you need to rest and recharge. 
when you feel like you've got nothing left, when you've got no grit left. Sometimes you've got some left and you can muster it up. But other times you've got to realize that you've got to rely more on God's grace. In Ephesians 13, there's a verse, and at the very end of the verse, it says this. In Ephesians 6, 13, it says, Having done everything you know to do, stand firm. So sometimes you don't have grace to go forward. All you can do is just <laughs> stay put and let God carry you. Grace to get through to the other side. Grit in grace. And Jesus is calling us to grow. But we have to face our shadows. You know, I, I spent years wondering how to follow Jesus and do what I felt called to do, but also somehow support my family in the process. I had started out in ministry in circles where you didn't need degrees uh, to be able to do what it is that I, that I felt called to do. I had the grit to learn on my own, and I did it because I, I do much better learning on my own than in, than in formal classrooms. Um, that's grit, right? But I didn't, I didn't know how to rely on grace sometimes, so I tried to do it all to myself. I'd white knuckle it, white knuckle it, white knuckle it. When I got out of the, kind of the, the weird toxic circles and got into other Christian circles, I realized that to, to be able to make the same living and still do what I felt called to do, I now had to have at least two degrees behind my name. And I didn't have any. I was a music school dropout. I dropped out so that I could join ministry. <laughs> Career shift. God called me out. And so I went that way. And so I remember like trying hard for years and years and years to get every, to try every single job I could try and find. And if, if I showed you my resume, you'd see a string of, of jobs, secular jobs, church jobs, whatever. And it was just white knuckling it. And then one day I, I, I had this epiphany that the seminary, I, this grad, graduate school I always would, someday would have loved to get into, for whatever reason, had a program for people like me who have a lot of ministry experience but, but no degrees. And so there was a grace for me that all of a sudden I realized that, oh my gosh, I can get into a seminary and get a master's degree without having... I can go straight to my profession without having a bachelor's degree. And I applied and I got in. And somewhere along the line, I get this call from this, this zany superintendent from southern Minnesota trying to get me to come to this church in Mankato. And I told him no a bunch of times, not realizing what God was trying to do. <laughs> and I come down here, fell in love with the place, fell in love with the people and canceled out all the other plans I had going on. My wife quit her job. We pulled our kids out of their school and we moved down here and have never regretted it. It's, it's, that's grace. You can white knuckle it and white knuckle it and then one day God just does it for you. Opens the door, you just walk through it. There's times for grit and there's times for grace. And may you have the wisdom to know what season you're in. Is it a, is it a, a grit through grace kind of a season or is it a just lay down and let the wave of grace carry you kind of a season? You want to get through the other side of your shadows, master that dynamic. To learn, the, to learn to ride the waves of grit and grace. God did, God's grace made connections for me. God's grace made connections for so many people. And God's grace, I would bet if you look at your life, you can count so many instances where God's grace has made connections for you. And I bet that you will have many more instances in your story yet of that grace making connections for you. God did it for, for so many and he's going to continue to do it for you. If you stay gritty, but know when to allow God's grace to carry you through to the other side. Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children.
this week's episode of Belgrade Online. If it was life-giving and encouraging to you, please let us know by visiting our giving page at baumc.org give. Thanks again for watching and have a blessed week.